Hello everyone, welcome to Brain Blitz Audios. Today in this video we're going to be talking about some questions of SRM Joint Hundreds Examination and we're going to be discussing the solution of this exam. So SRM JEE is a premier exam in Indian circles and a lot of people write this exam. So today we're going to be discussing a sample paper of SRM JEE 2021. We're taking some select questions from the sample paper and we will be discussing those for your preparation for SRM JEE 2021. Here comes our first question. It is from physics. Dash possess the maximum value for the rigidity modulus. Which of these elements will fill that gap? We have iron, copper, steel, and tungsten. Iron has a value of the rigidity mo mo modulus that's equal to 41. Copper has a value that's equal to 45. The rigidity modulus for steel is equal to 77, but for tungsten, it's a whopping 160. So therefore, option D, tungsten, happens to be the correct option to, to becoming the element that possesses the maximum value for rigidity modulus. Let's look at the next question. The distance between the nearest node and antinode in a stationary wave is lambda, lambda by 2, lambda by 4, 2 lambda. Well, how do we solve this question? The best way to solve it is to draw a wave and to understand what are nodes and antinodes. So this is a stationary wave and this wave has a wavelength that is lambda and it is divided into two parts. One part goes above the stationary line and the other part goes below the mean position. So therefore, both of these halves will have a value of lambda by 2. Now, the nodes are the, are the points on the wave, on the stationary wave, that stay in the mean position. And the antinodes are these points here, which are at the extreme position. Now, the difference between... Now, since the antinode is present in the middle of the two nodes, the distance between an antinode and a node has to be half of the distance between two nodes, which is lambda by 2. So therefore, the distance between a node and an antinode is lambda divided by 4. So therefore, option C is the correct option for this question. Lambda is the total wavelength. Lambda by 2 is the distance between two nodes. And 2 lambda means twice the wavelength. So all of the other options are incorrect. Next question. This is from chemistry, by the way. Among the following series of transition metal ions, the one where all metal ions have same 3D electronic configuration is. So we have the oxidation states of four transition elements, titanium, vanadium, chromium, and manganese. So the first thing we need to do is to take out, to find out the electronic configuration of these four elements. Titanium has 22 electrons. A total of 22 electrons, so its configuration is the configuration of argon, which is the nearest noble gas. Then in the outer shell, you'll have 4s2 and then 3d2. If you look at vanadium, it has atomic number 23, so therefore you'll get argon, and then you have 4s2, then 3d3. For the next element that is chromium, the atomic number is 24, so the electronic configuration here will be slightly different. So it's 4s1 and then 3d5. This is due to Hunt's rule of maximum multiplicity where you have to, and you have to, you know, find, you, you have to know that half-filled orbital is also stable. So in order to get the half-filled orbital 3d5, one of the element, one of the electrons of the s orbital moves to the d orbital. And that's why chromium has 4s1 3d5 instead of 4s2 3d4. And finally, you have manganese, which has atomic number 25. You have argon's configuration, and then 4s2, and then 3d5. So full-filled s orbital, half-filled d orbital. So that's pretty stable. Now, <clears throat> you need to find out which of these series have the same 3d electronic configuration. So in this particular, you know, question, what we're going to do is we're going to take the 
ions of titanium first, and then we find out whether they ma the, the, the 3D electronic configuration matches up with the other elements. So over here, the least, ox the least oxidation state is Ti+. Plus. So it has an oxidation state of plus 1. So the value of Ti+, plus will be, let's just take the outer configuration. So one electron goes from S, so it's 4S1, and then you have 3D2. Now for vanadium, the oxidation state is plus four. So that means four electrons go away from here. So two electrons from S move away because it's the, because it's, you know, because it goes from S first, then P and then D. And then since there's no P, you have, the P is not filled, you have D here, 3D3. And again, this filling and unfilling of electrons has to do with the off-bow principle that dictates how electrons are filled. So from 3D3, four, I mean, two electrons go, so two plus two, that arises to four. So finally, you get 4S0, 3D1. But then as you can see, the 3D electronic configuration is different in Ti plus and vanadium four plus. So therefore, option C has to be incorrect. So therefore, it's, it's a good idea to erase that up. Next, we have Ti2+, plus, which is lesser than the other options. So therefore, Ti2+, plus will mean that two electrons will go from 4s, so you get 4s0 and 3d2. Well, that's all right. Let's look at the next element. So vanadium has V3+, plus as the oxidation state of the ion. So as you can see, 4s2 moves away, and then one electron from 3d3 also moves away. So you get 4s0 and 3d2. So far, so good. Now what about chromium? Chromium has atomic number 24, and in this case, chromium loses four of its electrons. So one electron goes from s, making it zero, and then from 3d5, three electrons go, so 3d5 minus three, so that is equal to 3d2. Finally, you have manganese 5 plus, which again gives you 4s0, 3d2. So therefore, option A happens to be the correct option for this question. If you were to look at the other options, Ti3 plus will give you 3d1 as the oxidation state. I mean, 3d1 as the configuration, but then V2 plus will give 3d3 which again is not equal. So B is incorrect. For Ti4+, plus, it will be 3D0, and then for V3+, plus, it will be 3D2, which again makes these, the electronic configuration, are, which makes the electronic configuration different. So therefore, options A, C, D are, in, I mean, options B, C, D are incorrect. The correct option is option A. Now, Let's look at another question. The least random state of H2O is. So in chemistry, randomness is known as entropy. And this particular quantity is dependent on the energy of the state of matter that we're in. And this energy, again, is dependent on the temperature of that particular state. So steam is the hottest form of water, so therefore it will be the most random state. That means option C is incorrect. Liquid water is colder than steam, but since ice is colder than liquid water, liquid water will be more random than ice. So that makes ice the least random state of water. Option A, ice becomes the least random state of H2O. And since randomness depends upon randomness that is entropy depends upon energy which depends upon temperature that means that option D is also incorrect now let's move on to some mathematics questions so we have to find out the order of the differential equation here 2x squared d squared y by dx squared minus 3 times dy by dx plus y equals 0 so which of these is the correct option? Two, one, zero, not defined. 
Well, you can see that we have a second order differential d square y by dx square here, and we also have a first order differential dy by dx. And since the highest order is the second order differential, so therefore the order of this differential equation will be option A2. If B were to be correct, then this term will not exist. If C was to be correct, then this won't be a differential equation. And option D, that's not defined, happens only if the differential goes inside the mouth of something such as sine, such as the sine function and other trigonometric function, and then log functions, etc. So, therefore, option A2 is the correct answer for this question. Now, the next question. 4, 3, 2, and 1 minus 2x are two matrices of the order 3 cross 1 and 1 cross 3, respectively. And if, and if their multiplication, if their product equals the singular matrix 6, then x is 4, 3, 2, or 1. Let's start multiplying. 4, 3, 2 multiplies with 1, minus 2, and x. So therefore, you'll get 4 times 1. So first term of the row goes with first term of that column. 3 times minus 2. And then 2 times x. So this is equal to the matrix 6. So therefore, 6 equals 4 minus 6 plus 2x. So therefore, 2x equals 6 plus 6 minus 4. That equals 12 minus 4, which equals 8. So therefore, x equals 8 divided by 2, which is equal to 4. So therefore, the correct option here will be option A, which is 4. Now, let's look at a biology question. The application of bioinformatics include proving a signaling pathway, clinical trials, drug design, identification of a lipid pathway. So jobs such as clinical trials and identification of a lipid pathway go under research. So therefore these options are incorrect. Proving a signaling pathway among cells is an important job under microbiology because that helps us in finding out cures for diseases and how best to combat them. Drug design on the other hand requires data and when you have biological data being stored, acqu acquired, analyzed and disseminated, option C, that's drug design, will be an application of the science, the branch of science that is bioinformatics. So bioinformatics is the branch of data, is the branch of biology that involves an acquisition, storage, analysis, and dissemination of biological data, which again is very useful in finding out which drugs are best to the body for a particular pathogen or a particular side effect, I mean for a particular symptom. Now here lies the final question of this episode, the hydrogen bonds between cytosine and guanine are option A1, option B2, option C3, option D4. So, let's look at a bond between guanine and cytosine. The bonds which are dotted, these are what we call hydrogen bonds between two molecules. So these are intermolecular hydrogen bonds. So the hydrogen is attached to an, an element already but then it feels but then it shows an attractive force towards a different element or an element in a different molecule and these kinds of bonds are hydrogen bonds which are usually a part of nonpolar bonds so in in between guanine and cytosine you can see one two three 
bonds of this nature. So therefore, option C, 3, will be correct. Option D, 4, is incorrect because there are only 3 here. Option A, 1, is incorrect because among, because among these two molecules, you have 3 of them. And there are molecules with one hydrogen bond, say water. But then over here, it's 3, so it's incorrect. Option B2 is also incorrect. This is usually found in between adenine and thymine, which are the other two nitrogenous bases. Cytosine and guanine are two nitrogenous bases. And so therefore, they form three hydrogen bonds. Option C is the correct answer for this question of biology. That concludes this episode of SRMJEE -E Questions with Solution. We hope you found this episode interesting. For more of our videos, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, which is Brain Blitz Audios. If you want to receive the latest updates regarding our useful and interesting content, don't forget to hit that notifications button, which is present below the video. So until the next episode, take care, stay safe, bye bye for now.